and basically I'll be explaining it as cut time, two measures. So the, the pattern of clave is going to fail two measures long. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And two. So the Dan Son rhythm then is going to feel, I'll play it on the two side, which is going to have more straight rhythm at the beginning. And then on the second measure, you'll hear the more syncopated rhythm. And that follows. So straight side. really uh, one of the very first rhythms uh, that was developed purely in cubits. It's so yeah, he's, there, there's a, an instrument, you can buy them in plastic, they're, but uh, <laughs> traditionally they're, they're made out of boards. They're, they're, they're hollowed out boards and then uh, call those ridges, ridges into the side of the gourd and then it's scraped. So it's, it's really an, an indigenous instrument. Um, to, uh, which is a populace that doesn't exist anymore on the island of Cuba. Uh, and it's, it's scraped, it's played even in modern uh, music of Cuba today. It's, it's lasted from the early, uh, mid 1800s all the way to being used today. Uh, once you see it, you hear it, you'll recognize it immediately. You, you hear it on tunes like Low Rider, uh, you heard it on uh, Santana's hit. It's a, it's a very important instrument for cha cha, uh, which we'll get into. Um, but that rhythm. The, uh, the, the only instruments, percussion instruments in uh, playing a dance on orchestra would be the timbale and then uh, the, the wiro. And that basically the wiro is gonna play the same rhythm. So it's gonna play whatever the direction of the clave is taking you, it's gonna be played this way. Yeah. So that rhythm and the way it's played on timbale is when you approach it to the, the drum set, uh, even if you're not playing danson, because I mean it's it's a Cuban form of music that's you know still around today, but it's obviously not going to be played in Cincinnati very much. But um, but you can take that concept, and probably many of you already have, of playing a rhythm similar to this. So if you're ever trying to play like some kind of quasi Latin thing on the drum set. Uh, I remember when I first started playing in a, in a blues band here, we wanted to do a Latin thing and not really having studied any Cuban music at the time, I would play something similar to that without knowing it, um, and many of you probably do already. So you play the typical little bossa beat, and then I would do. kind of syncopated rhythm that you could play. And I didn't realize at the time, but that really comes from the dance song. That, that kind of <laughs> kind of groove works that way. Okay, so in a traditional dance song, as I mentioned, that you would have a timbali player and then you would have a wiro player. So one, two, three. that was considered a very vulgar rhythm. <laughs> the high society of Cuba, they didn't like it at all. It was a very, it was only for the younger generation of the time. Um, they didn't like the fact that uh, there was an indigenous music uh, instrument being played. They didn't like the drums, the timbales. Uh, and as a result, there was no way that, uh, that the, the hand drums were gonna be involved in the, in the dance song. Because at the time, that was considered uh, slave instruments. Mm -hmm. So the music of the danzón was really uh, the, the Spanish Cuban the people that had come from Spain, who maybe were born in Cuba, but were uh, uh, considered a higher society. That was the music that they were listening to. So while that was happening, though, that music was very popular. You had that clave conscious thing happening. At the same time that was happening, in the tenements where the slaves were living, you had a rumba forming. And... Um, the most common rumba, I guess you would say, is, is something called Wan Wan Ko. That developed when the slaves weren't working, they were allowed to play. It was one of the cool things about uh, the island of Cuba, is that whereas in the United States, 
Uh, the drums were not allowed to be played at all. They were taken, there was no chance for them to retain any type of, uh, of African culture. In Cuba, they were allowed, the, Sp the Spanish allowed them to play. So you had all of these things develop. We'll play some rumba now. Um, basically, rumba is, is a melodic pattern that's played between two congas, and then a third conga would be uh, basically solo. He's soloing, and then there's dancing going on. And the dancing is directly um, intertwined with what the soloist on the conga is doing. So you'll, if you've ever seen a traditional rumba, you'll see a, the, the soloist playing on, a, on what's called a quinto. It's a very small, a smaller drum than those two. And if, if the dancer knows what's going on, there'll be an interplay between the, the dancer and the, the congo player. But we're going to have uh, Caro play the quinto part on the bongo. So we'll play rumba here. Play. There's a melodic pattern that you're going to hear over and over on the, on the two drums that Stan's going to play. something if I had Tom's I could I could show you how to play it uh, on there but it's pretty pretty simple it's just low high high low what happens with that um, there's no uh, traditional drum set nor timbali part that happens on there um, however you would have clave again because every music whether it's uh, secular which is all we'll be dealing with or religious music in Cuba clave is in everything it's just always there there would be one person playing clave and then we're going to be using the rumba clave for this. So that's going to be the, on the three side, the fourth note will be on the and of four. So to go over that one more time, starting on the two side, it's one, two, three, four, one and two, and three, and four, and one, two, and three, four, one and two, and three, and four, and. So that syncopated uh, eighth note at the very end is, is a must for playing folklore rumba music. Um, and it locks in. You're going to see how it locks in. Um, so Stan, go ahead and play your your pattern, and I'm going to play the the clave with it. You'll see how it how it fits. together they they supplement each other and in Cuba little children will will walk up and be able to clap clave you know I mean they're still in diapers and they'll just sit there and, and they'll clap clave in the United States you know you little kids will clap you know the two and the four right because that's the one and three <laughs> exactly depending on uh, whether they're really hip or not Cotto would bring his little babies to the gig you know and they'd be clapping clave, you know. It's just, it's just when it, you grow up listening to that music and feeling it and hearing it, it's just part of their, uh, their blood. So one person would be playing the clave, the other person would be playing the, uh, what's called a palito pattern. Mm -hmm. And this is very important because this is really where the, uh, the drum set, the timbali parts started to become developed. The clave pattern, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. Okay, go ahead. The pattern is played on uh, a piece of wood, and it goes like this. So clave is actually in that pattern. One. playing, I'm not accenting the pattern, but it's within the pattern. Uh, no one knows for sure, but it's argued that's one of the first patterns, that uh, rhythmic patterns that fit clave, and, uh, and it's really the, the foundation for everything else that was built on top of that, as far as the bell patterns that we play and, and everything. 